Okay, so we got some one-step inequalities we're going to work on today. Super similar to our one-step equations we did a couple, what, last week, week four? Um, so there's really not anything different. The uh, only thing different now is that we're going to draw the graph that goes with the solution. Um, so we're not going to write the steps again because, like I said, they're just like the equations. Um, you know, work with the side that has the variable, do the inverse operation, um, and then... You know, whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other, um, and then you just check your answer. So we're going to jump straight into some examples. Okay, so first one, x minus 3 is greater than 8. Okay? So remember, you only care about the side that has the variable. So once again, if I draw my line to help me see where my two sides are. Um, I only care about this side because that's where my variable is. So x minus 3 is what I'm looking at. So if I want to get x by itself, then what needs to leave? Um, and that minus 3 is what needs to leave. So the inverse of minus 3 would be plus 3. Okay, and remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to go to the other side of the wall and do the exact same thing. Okay, so now... The reason we do that is so that these right here will cancel out. They're gone. So the only thing left over here now is x. And now if I do 8 plus 3, I get 11. And I just bring that sign straight down. So to solve this problem, x can be anything greater than 11. So now when I go and plot that on a graph, remember 11 goes in the middle. You got 10 and 12. Okay, so now we just need to um, shade our spots in. So my sign does not have a line underneath it. It's just uh, the shape, or it's just the sign. So it's an open circle, and it says it has to be greater than 11. So the numbers that are greater than 11 would be going this way. All right, and remember, it's not just 12. It's anything going this direction. So it could be 12. It could be 212. It could be a million. Um, Anything that's bigger than a twi excuse me, anything that's bigger than eleven will fit right here. So, for example, what I mean by that is if I plug in twelve right here, twelve minus three is nine, and nine is greater than eight, so it makes it a true statement. Whereas if I pick ten, ten minus three is seven, and seven is not greater than eight, so that's why everything bigger than eleven is what's going to have to be your answer. Okay, let's try another one. Let's do 20 less than K plus 15. Okay? So you can solve this how it looks right now. But remember I told you that we always want our variables to be on the left. So let's go ahead and fix this so that it looks right um, so we can do it the correct way. So let's just go ahead and rewrite K plus 15, and then I have my 20. But remember, since I flipped my sides, I also have to flip my sign. So instead of pointing to the left, I really want it to be pointing to the right. Okay, now this is a problem that I can solve. Okay, so all I did, I didn't change anything, is that make it so that my variable's on the left-hand side now, because remember, that's how I want to be able to solve it. I could have solved it how it originally was, um, but I like to solve it so that the variable's on the left. So now, got my two sides. This is the side that I care about because it's got my variable. So how do I get rid of this plus 15? I have to subtract 15. Whatever you do to one side of the wall, you have to come to the other side of the wall and do the same thing. So now that I've done that, these are going to cancel out. So I'm left with K. 20 minus 15 is 5, and you just bring that sign straight down. So now when I graph this one, I've got my 5 in the middle, 4, 6. Once again, I do not have a line underneath my sign, so that tells me my circle has to be open. And this says K is greater than 5. But once again, since my variable's on the left, I can just look and see which way this arrow is pointing. It's pointing to the right, 
So that's the way that I need to shade. Remember, if I hadn't changed how it originally looked, then I couldn't look at the way it's pointing because it'd be pointing the other way. So you always have to make sure your variable's on the left so that you can just look at which way the arrow is pointing. Let's try another one. Um, let's do B divided by 3 is greater than 6. Okay, so everything's good. My variable's on the left, so that's what matters. I can go ahead and look at my wall. All right, so B and 3, all right, what are, remember, I'm trying to get B by itself. I'm trying to get that variable so that it's all alone. Right now, this 3 is in the way. What are B and 3 doing? B and 3 are dividing, so the inverse of division would be multiplication. So we're going to multiply by 3. And whatever you do to one side, you have to go and do to the other side. So now, when I do these two, they cancel out. So I'm left with, I'll do it right here, B, and then 6 times 8, or 6 times 3 is 18. And I just bring that sign down. Okay? So all I did was multiply by the inverse. And remember, I had to multiply because I was dividing. So you always do the inverse, you always do the opposite, so I was, so I was multiplying. All right, so 18's in the middle. Okay, my sign does not have a line underneath it, so I'm gonna have an open circle, and it says that B is greater than 18, so that means I'm going this way towards the 19. All right, let's do another one. H minus eight is less than or equal to 12. Okay, here's my wall. All right, so I'm looking at this side because here's where my variable is. All right, so H minus eight, how do I get rid of a minus eight? You have to add eight. And remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to also do to the other side. So now these will cancel out. And you're only left with H over here. 12 plus eight is 20. And I just bring that sign straight down. So now when I Draw my number line. Okay, this time my sign does have a line underneath it. So if there's a line underneath it, I automatically know this circle has to be filled in. Okay, this is H is less than or equal to 20. So if it's less than, that means I need to go towards the 19 because 19 is less than 20. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, let's do four G greater than or equal to 28. All right, so let me draw my wall. So I care about this side because this is where my variable is. I don't care about this 28 just yet. So I'm looking at the 4 and the G. Well, what are the 4 and the G doing? Anytime you have a number beside a letter, that means you're multiplying. So instead of multiplying, I really need to do the inverse, which is dividing. So we'll show that by drawing our line and putting a 4 underneath it. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here because whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. When I do these, these cancel out. So I'm left with G on this side. 28 divided by 4 is 7. And you just bring your line, your uh, sign straight down. So now when I graph this, I have a line underneath my sign. So that tells me automatically that this has to be a closed circle. 
and since it says g is greater than or equal to 7, has to be going this way because this numbers, these numbers are the ones that are greater than 7. All the ones head that direction. Okay? Let's do one more. Let's do... Oh, maybe two more, sorry, if we have time. I think we will. I want to do one with a negative. So let's do this one, and then we'll do one more with a negative. Um, let's see. 21 greater than or equal to g over 4. Okay? Once again, I don't like it when my variable's on this side over here, so we need to switch things. So let's go ahead and put g divided by 4. 21, and remember, you need to flip your sign. So right now it's pointing to the right, so I need to switch it, and then it's pointing to the left. Now I can solve this. All right, so here's my wall. All right, so I'm looking at this side because here's where my variable is. What are G and 4 doing? G and 4 are dividing. So to solve this, I actually have to multiply, so I'm going to multiply by 4, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. When I do that, these will cancel out, so I'm just left with G. And then I do 21 times 4, and I get 84. And I'm just going to bring that sign straight down. And now I can draw my graph. So I got 84 here. All right, my sign does have a line underneath it. So if there's a line, you automatically know this has to be closed and it's pointing to the left, so I'm going to shade to the left. Okay? All right, one more. Lucky seven. All right, let's say I've got W uh, plus 10 greater than negative 2. Okay, let's draw my wall. So how do I get rid of this plus 10? Remember, I only care about this side right now because here's where my variable is. So I need to subtract 10. I have to do the opposite or the inverse. Okay, so now when I do that, these are going to cancel out, and I'm left with W. These signs are the same. You can tell that they're the same sign. So with the same sign, you just add and keep. So 2 plus 10 is going to leave me with 12. And since both of these are a negative sign or a minus sign, this also has to be. And then you just bring your sign straight down. So now when I graph this, negative 12 is in the middle. Remember when it's negative, it's backwards. So this over here will be negative 13. This will be negative 11. Okay. There is no line underneath my sign. So that tells me this has to be an open circle. It is pointing to the right, so I'm going to shade to the right. Okay, so this is very similar to the one-step equations we've already been practicing. You just need to make sure that you're good with your uh, graphing your solutions.